Hola amigos, how's everybody doing out there on the World Wide Web and to everybody who is here watching this later on in the future. So, hi, my name is Jack. Over in this square, or rectangle over here, is Ben. We are just two dudes who love to rant, rave, ramble about anything, comic books, sci-fi, movies in general, conspiracy theories, we do it all here. It's very multiversal, which yes, that is a complete pun. Uh, but So this is going to be on a subject which I am extremely passionate about because these are my favourite games which I have played uh, right up until, I'd say, Assassin's Creed 3, but that's another story for another time. But it's obviously about Assassin's Creed. So Assassin's Creed, in essence, how do I explain it in the most simplest of terms? There's a particular, there's a particular bloodline going throughout history which somehow relates to pieces of Eden which are mentioned within the Bible, and so you have the assassins versus the Templars who are out to seek it for evil means and the assassins are obviously out to protect the world and so on from catastrophe if they gain the pieces of Eden. <gasps> so anyway, we're going to be on that subject. And it relates to, there's a very good crossover in the games from the real world to the world from past history. So what the Animus is, considering the title, the Animus is a piece of technology which is kind of a little bit like VR, so virtual reality. And what the Animus can do is that you can go into this machine and it takes you back to the time of when your ancestors were alive. But there's a few questions which I have concerning the bleeding effect, which is mentioned a lot in the Assassin's Creed games, which I'll explain. Um, but when Desmond Miles, the prime example, goes into the Animus, he is able to relive the memories of his ancestor Thus, I think in a way that with the bleeding effects on, he is con he is his ancestor within the Animus, which is controlling his ancestor's actions, but yet doesn't know that he's controlling that. It's a bit confusing. Yeah. Um, also, we're going to talk about the movie as well, which the cluster fudge that is because I've got so many complaints. Um, so uh, going through the whole storyline, everything's a very good arc. So where they can find, discover the pieces of Eden, discover the secrets, then come back out of the Animus, back into the real world, and go from there to further on the plot, which is a really good segue, and it's brilliant how it's done. But there's a few other things which I have um, question-wise along with this as we go along through this live stream. But the concept of the Animus is definitely the probably the coolest virtual reality system you can possibly imagine. Going back in time, um, pretty much reliving the memories of your ancestors. I mean, I would love. I mean, I'd love to have that as a real world possibility, whether an animus could possibly be real in the future. I don't think it will be in my lifetime, but it's definitely a really cool concept, Ben. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I still trying to wrap my head around the whole logic within the animus itself, because it's all based around the whole idea of ancestral memories. And you, as you said, you are supposed to be your own ancestor, but if you de you're supposed to sort of stay within the perimeters of said memory, if you deviate off those perimeters, then obviously the system doesn't crash, but it, it ends up having... synchronizes. Yeah. And it essentially means that you are yourself, but you're also your ancestor, but there isn't anything else you can change because obviously it's a memory. You're not changing the past itself. You're just reliving it to the best that they can muster. Exactly. So they have like the main plot and idea which they are going along with their actions, so on. And it do and so I don't believe they're controlling the actions of their ancestor. I no. think they're pretty much just along with for the ride. But then yeah. Desmond ends up through the, this thing called the bleeding effect, where obviously they go through the motions, go through the skills and everything which the which Desmond's ancestor Ezio and Altair learn. And so he ends up learning the same thing throughout the real world called the bleeding effect. So it's the general plot logic within this game, uh, within the series of games, that your blood carries the memories of your ancestor. It carries basically a code of past memories from your ancestors and a lineage, which can then be replayed out through the Animus. But yeah, there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of logic to the Animus, which I feel is a bit skew with still. I mean, the thing is. 
I would love to, like you say, it would be amazing to see this technology in real world because if you think about it, obviously the main thing is, like you say, the bleeding effect where he ends up learning the skills of his ancestors of all the fighting skills and so on. That sounds more like an, a technology that could be used for the armed forces. Yeah. You could train somebody up. Instead of spending months and years to train somebody, you could train somebody in perhaps a week at the most with the, like, an entire encyclopedia of fighting skills. Exactly. But at the same point, it's trying to figure out how does your bloodline retain information from other people within your ancestral DNA, because obviously there are so many different ancestors over the time, it's hard to funnel through just one bit of information. Exactly. Um, and plus the main... Like the main piece throughout the main Desmond Miles storyline and the Desmond Miles and Ezio storyline is that they're going through like the whole genetic memories and so on to find the and like to find the pieces of Eden, the apple of Eden, which in a well in the Bible there is mention of a piece of a uh, forbidden fruit, but it's in no way mentioned that the apple of Eden is actually an apple. It could be a banana, it could be anything, it could be a pot, it could be a pot of cherries, anything. But anyway. As they go through, the thing which really does puzzle my mind is that if they're able to go through the whole genetic line and so on anyway, and they're able to pick a certain exact time where they want to go back to this particular time when this ancestor was around, why don't they just go back to around that time when the ancestor knew where the apple was so they can just take the apple right then and there instead of having to go through a whole plot? Yeah, that's the thing that I really don't comprehend in terms of like it's not even just the movie logic it's the video game logic of itself like because i've played the games to a degree but i still haven't figured out the whole concept of it what exactly is the apple of eden what's the whole premise behind it well the apple of eden in short is a, is like a piece of technology in a way which was created by the isu which the isu was the basically the first race if you will on uh, on Earth in the universe, and they are basically um, a species of basically they are gods. So you have Jupiter, you have Juno, you have a lot of um, names with the same names from Greek mythology. Um, so you had the Isu, which was the gods, and which were the main inhabitants of the world. And then at some point after that, humans did come along, and they wanted to use the uh, they wanted to use the Apple of Eden to basically enslave. The humans and so on and then you had the isu and the humans ended up interbreeding and everything like that and so the apple of eden can produce this effect where one who wields it can um influence somebody's mind influence somebody's mind to do whatever the heck they want create illusions within inside their head make them do other things and so on but if they had that bloodline which Ezio did he had a, the particular bloodline of the isu and the humans so the apple of eden didn't affect him at all and this piece of um and so with this Apple of Eden, if the Templars got their hands on it, they would be able to influence the entire world to maybe do things, influence world leaders and so on. It can basically wreak havoc throughout the world to make humans more compliant, which was what Juno, uh, the main um, main antagonist, who was, a, a, who was like the god that was communicating with Desmond. So with the Apple of Eden, the, the assassins obviously want to stop that from happening and want it to be hidden but this piece of technology was the main thing that the templars wanted this apple of eden for so it's a piece of technology that adam and eve who were uh two humans stole the apple of eden from the isu and decided to there is multiple pieces of eden there's many pieces of eden which are scattered all throughout the world but the main piece is this apple and so they took it hit it i don't know if this is one I, I because the the plot is so complicated even though i played the game so much even i still get a bit confused but they stole it i think they put it somewhere and then after that templars found out about it later on and went off to find it i mean while that's an incredible plot surely if you have the technology available to go through certain people's ancestral history and relive certain things I know this is probably a very bizarre and probably an Americanized way of looking at it, but if you're able to go into someone's like ancestral history, 
why not just use that on said person that you're trying to bribe? You could easily sedate them and then use them on the animus and then find deep, dark family secrets and then use that against them in terms of how to manipulate them instead of trying to find said artifact that could possibly control someone that may or may not work. That is actually... That does kind of segue into what I was thinking, because in Assassin's Creed 3, because the games now go in a really weird order. So you had one, two... Like, so, let me see, you had one, two, Brotherhood, which is technically number three, but for some reason it's not, what for whatever reason. Then you had Assassin's Creed Revelations, which was technically number four. Then Assassin's Creed Black Flag came out, and then you had Assassin's Creed 3. But yet, yeah, Assassin's Creed 3 was no Assassin's Creed 3 was after Black Flag, that's right, but for some reason it's number five, number six is number whatever. I know it's confusing as hell. It's like a prequel before a prequel, then prequels, and pre then after that, <laughs> then it gets freaking confusing. But, um, anyway, so they got so anyway, Ezio has to go back, uh, through his ancestors' memories, which is Connor, who is a one from the 17th century. And he goes back, so he finds this piece which is related to the Apple of Eden, which is buried, which Connor buried, because uh, one of the gods told him to bury it in a place where nobody would find it. Obviously, the main point is for it not to be found. But then, obviously, through the memories, Desmond knows where this... Um, Desmond ends up knowing where this artifact is, goes to the location, says, I know where it is. And then they go to the location to dig it up and find it. But then I think to stop all this chaos from happening, why don't you just leave the artifact exactly where it is? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> isn't like because you keep finding these things is pretty much the problem. <laughs> well, if you find it, then that's fair enough. Why not just rehide it? And then, I mean, the other thing as well is obviously they could just find the artifact, hide it somewhere else. Then use the animus themselves to wipe said memory so it doesn't reoccur in their ancestral DNA for future reference. Because if you're able, well, I mean, if you're able to manipulate the DNA to find said memories in the first place, you must be able to manipulate the memories to either delete them or whatever. Like, there must well, be. I'm not sure whether, like, after Desmond has gone through the memories, I think, because I'm not sure, because they don't mention it within the game. But it is possible for the player, you, to go back to repeat certain memories. So I'm assuming if you're able to do that, Desmond must be able to like go back in time going, oh, I kind of screwed up that little bit of my memory there. I might go back and just fix that. But yeah. it, the timeline will still be the same. It, it, history won't change, but they'll go back and go, oh, yeah, I screwed that up. I need to change that. So I'm assuming Desmond must be able to do that as well, or anybody. It's... And like, Or it maybe work like a computer going, Okay, I've done that. I've got to make sure they don't find this. Delete that memory file. So. Yeah. But this is it. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's an incredible series, nonetheless, like these games. I love but it. it. But I think now that they're trying to sort of go more into just random eras in history instead of like steadily progressing the story, yeah. it's made things far more complicated because... I think the latest one is Valhalla, if I'm correct, Valhalla. which looks amazing, but it's I'm trying to figure out the logic how that works. Because the other thing is, with the Desmond, the Desmond storyline is Assassin's Creed for me, yeah. and apart from that, after that, it gets lost for me, and it's kind of stopped becoming Assassin's Creed, and it was more inspired by Assassin's Creed because if it's not Desmond's storyline. I got completely lost, and I just didn't care much for the story anymore. And now you've got prequels, which are before prequels, then they release another prequel, and then another prequel, and then another prequel. Then they do a sequel, then they do... The story, the timelines is confusing as hell, so if anybody can explain it to me, please give me an Assassin's Creed timeline, because I'm confused as hell. Because then they introduce, like, mythical creatures and so on, which makes no bloody sense. And then you had Valhalla, which is the latest one, but Valhalla makes no sense because Vikings are the least stealthy people that ever existed. They are not stealthy whatsoever. They are brute. They are brute force. So, well, the point like Vikings being assassins, 
doesn't make any sense. Well, more to the point, I don't think Vikings would need assassins anyway, because their whole shtick was that they were meant to live and die by the sword, pretty much. They, like, pillaged and plundered villages. Yeah, <laughs> Like the whole thing was like they just literally they lived. Didn't call, to... They didn't call they didn't call them berserkers for no reason. No, but the whole point was that they lived and died by the concept that the better the battle, the more likely you were going to go off to a better place in the afterlife. Yeah, and it's just I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what they could do next. I I know it's probably a really big stretch in the dark, but I got this funny feeling that they're going to randomly at some point pick something like World War One or World War Two as a random moment for them to pick from as Assassin's Creed. I, I dread to think, but it's probably going to happen. But at the same point, it's just... Cause I, don't, of... I don't feel there's anything more they can do at this point because they did really well with the Desmond storyline when it got to Assassin's Creed 3, which technically number 5 or 6. Um, you know, I don't know why they called it Assassin's Creed 3, but there you go, even though 3 is technically Brotherhood. But, yeah. But that storyline, it was leading up to something, and you could follow it very easily. So it was so easy to follow. And when it got... To, and like, So you had... Because um, you had Black Flag, then you had number 3, which was a really nice ending to it. And then after that, the games, I feel after that, just became a massive cash grab because mm. they were more inspired by Assassin's Creed. And I didn't... A lot of the games were really shocking. They had really good mechanics and so on. But the storylines were so convoluted. It didn't make any sense. I didn't care for the characters. And I just stopped playing. I play the old games still because there's, there's actually a story there. There's substance that I can grab hold of. I mean, the thing is, as well, as obvious, the, the Animus, in the first game at least, is meant to be this quite behemoth-sized like, room full of gadgets. Like, like a chair, almost. Like a yeah. kind of chair. It's quite a big device. But then, as the game evolves, somehow the device itself gets smaller and easier to transport and less bulky, which... Which, which makes sense. To a degree, yes. But... If that's the case, then... I mean, obviously the Animus must give off some sort of energy signature, because if I... I might be completely wrong here. I'm assuming that obviously all the people that are the Assassins take hold of the technology for themselves and try to find the Apple of Eden before the baddies trying to get them get it for from them? In essence. So, with that logic, surely the baddies have some knowledge of how the Animus works, because it's their Oh, yeah, they do, because like the, temp the Templars, like Abstergo, is a Templar organisation, so they made the Animus. So, therefore, they know the energy signature of said machinery. Well, they must so, so, then, what's the point of them having their own one? Why not just, like, be assassins and disappear into nothingness? Because then they don't have to get the any of the artifacts that are hidden, because none of the guild of the baddies know where it is. Hence the reason for the game in the first place. Exactly. For I just feel that a really good direction, which something which I forgot to tell you about actually. But I am I'm at the minute making an Assassin's Creed because uh, you know you're making an I because you're, you're making an Iron Man costume. I'm actually making my own custom Assassin's Creed costume, but it's um <laughs> it's a modern day one though. I feel like. I feel like, you know, we've gone back in the past so much. It wouldn't hurt to at least have one game or one film which is more based in the modern day, which the the games themselves are a really good crossover because they bleed into each other and they don't mm. feel like two separate storylines. Whereas the film with Michael Fassbender, they were so disconnected from each other. The plots were so... just didn't connect really at all. I actually resented when the film... Like, when... Michael Fassbender's character Callum goes into the Animus. You know, it's lots of action, really good. I love when he's in the Animus and you only see through his ancestors' eyes, which is called mm. Agula, which is like the 16th century, I think, yes. or 14th century. Correct me if I'm wrong, you know, but I can't really remember. But um, so when you see that and you see Aguilar and everything, the Assassins, it's really good. It's really brilliant. It showcases what Assassin's Creed is. And then I really resented when the film would go back to the modern day because. It was so bad. The storytelling was terrible. And then they introduced a new concept of the Animus. 
which the concept of the animus is now no longer a chair. It's like a weird arm thing which straps you in and then you and then it connects into like your bloodstream, I'm assuming, or your I brain think stem. But and then you see Callum going through all the motions and everything, going through the memories and so on. But then it creates a lot of unanswered questions. So is he controlling his ancestor or is he just going through the motions? Is he just along for the ride? So that really, that's a question which really doesn't make sense to me. But then you could ask the same question for the games. Is he controlling his ancestor or is he just along for the ride? Is he just a passenger? I mean, the thing is, the movie had a lot of potential. But... Oh, I was so excited. <laughs> But the thing is, they reworked the plot to it. So, I mean, they were to a degree trying to hunt down for the technology of the Apple of Eden. But I think the main point of it was that they were trying to use him to train up other people to re-bring back the assassins because they just disappeared off the face of the Earth. Well, in a way, like the film, it created more questions than answers because mm. there is other assassins that were there at the Abstergo... Um, place that was in Spain and like they're basically prisoners pretty yes. much to relive these memories for the Templar's own ends which makes sense but these they all feel like side characters they don't feel important whatsoever to the story there's no real point in them truly being there and you no. don't get a background because I would have thought that the characters which they had all the other assassins you know they're assassins but they didn't have any really any part to play apart from one of them didn't have a part to play within Cal's, Aguilar's uh, memories. So they didn't even feel like side characters because they weren't in the plot of the past memories. So that didn't make any sense to me. So it does create a lot of questions, for sure. I mean, the thing is, I did like the concept of how they reworked the Animus, where it all like connects that. to him. It was fun to watch the action and scenes. Like, just watching like the real body going through the motions of the assassin, I actually... Anybody can rag on me for the film, but I really like... I prefer that idea more than just sitting in a chair. Yeah, but the thing that I... I found really hard to try and follow was... It was meant to be... They could see, to a degree, like some projection around him in terms of like the buildings yes. and stuff. But it was very... Par it was only partially there. Like, it wasn't like a whole proper VR system where it was all back to what it should have looked. That would have looked so much more amazing because you could have had it so... Instead of him being like a split between him and his ancestor, you could have had him look like he's back in that era. And from his perspective, it's him in his modern clothing, but in any reflections or any like bits of water, it'd be his ancestor or whatever. So it'd be a mix of the both worlds. So you could understand that, yes, it is still a memory, but it's still part of the VR system because the yeah. movie made it felt more like a glorified VR system and yeah. nothing else, really. No, I know. It's just the VR thing and the way they did the Animus, I love that concept. Mm. I think that works actually better because, you know, the bleeding effect and everything when it says, like, you can, if you spend so much time in the Animus, there's the bleeding effect, which you can end up taking on the skills from your ancestor, which you didn't know before, which is a really cool concept and makes sense. So mm. the virtual reality thing, when you see Cal's character, when you see him doing the same actions as his ancestor did, I like the idea. You can see him going through the motions. You can see why the bleeding effect now makes sense. Mm. I like that idea. I thought the Animus was really freaking cool. And then if they know... But the bit that puzzles me, if the Templars know that he knows where the Apple of Eden is, then if how do you sequence one particular small bit of time, like a month or so within like so much of their bloodline? How do you know exactly the right point in time to go to to find the Apple of Eden? Why don't you just go to the point where the Apple of Eden was and then just take it instead of having to go through a whole story of their memory, you know? Yeah, I mean, because how would they gain the information of knowing it was in... So that really screws my noodle. Well, that because, like, they... Because, like, he... Because Cal's character, he killed a pimp, and he was, gonna, he was on death row, and he got executed, and then he woke up in the Abstergo uh, building, which is in Spain, and, like, the other character... 
um, Sophia basically explained why he was there and everything, like because of his ancestor, bloodline, blah, 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 blah. And she said that she knew everything about him, his like, life and everything like that. And what he did was watching him for a long time, yada, yada, yada. But then it still begs the question, how did they know that he was the ancestor that they needed? Because the... You, can you see what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say the same actually, because obviously you could pick anybody. Why would it? I mean, considering the fact that obviously the the, the memories that they're coercing from is, like you say, what sixteenth century, give or take. Yeah, there wouldn't be any logic of knowing what blood types were, so that's not re a reason for picking anybody because no. That's out of the question. No. But whereas, then, whereas like the Templars in the game, they knew to to find Desmond because his whole family had a lineage lineage of being assassins. So there was a point where they knew that the Miles family were assassins and knew that Desmond was connected to Ezio. So they knew who Desmond was. They knew to have him for the Animus. They knew that. But whereas with Cal, how did they know? <laughs> well, the thing is, as well as like, how can you know? Because the whole point of being an assassin is that you're not supposed to be known at all. But I know, but how do you know? <laughs> but this is it, like, how, like, unless you have, like, an OCD assassin that likes to make, like, a whole, uh, like, booklet or something, of, like, who's who of assassins? Oh, there's Fred over there, he's had ten kills, three of them are nuns. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, that would be, like, such a bad thing to do if you're part of an assassin's guild surely you'd be killed is within minutes of having that idea well yeah because like the point of being assassin is an assassin is you're stealthy and not meant to be known you're silent but then it appears in the film that assassins aren't actually very assassinate no no this is like if anything How can you be like silent and a silent killer if everybody knows about you <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> That makes it, no bloody sense. No, no, it's the biggest contradiction, I think, within the whole film itself. But it's also, within the film, they obviously, I think they have, what, three or four different people that they have listed within the whole program as trying to figure out where what's going on. And obviously, you've got Michael Fassbender as the leader of it. But how did they know he was the leader of them? That's... The, but the only thing is that's never answered in the film. No. That's never but... the film has so many unanswered questions. And I love Assassin's Creed and know quite a lot about Assassin's Creed, and yet I still can't figure it out. So it led me to the point of thinking, okay, so is there a point where the US government is where the US government is all Templars and they have been for centuries? Wouldn't freaking surprise me to be honest, considering mm. how screwed to buggery you lot are. But um <laughs> I'm sorry, but like <laughs> track record politicians, not so good. And mind you, it's worse over here. But that's uh. another subject for another time. But um, it made me think, is the government all Templars? And somehow or another, they, they would obviously, like in the real world, would have tabs and everything, like blood groups and so on, and have general a database on who everybody is that exists, like within America and so on, and like have their blood types, birth certificates, or they would know some information about you. But then it does make me think, but how do you know that one particular person out of millions of people is connected to this mysterious apple of Eden? How do you fully know that? How do you know it's this exact person that can find you the apple? How do you know? I mean, the only way... I There's a couple of ideas I can think of that might be able to tweak the plot in a way that could save itself, but I don't know if it would end up creating more questions than answers. Yeah, go on. So you can have for, say, at least one, there is some sort of assassin's language. Like, there's a scripture in which they all speak that only they can decode, which allows them to keep certain secrets of who they are they, and their families. See, they sort, sort of do. It was, like, sort of, they sort of did within the games, especially in number two with some of the, uh, with the Assassin's Blades and everything. Whenever there would be these codex pages, which Ezio would find, take back to his friend Leonardo da Vinci, who decodes them. Mm. And they're basically clues and, like, tips and tricks and everything for, like, the hidden blades and so on. So there is 
sort of something that that exists. I'm not sure if it's completely exclusive to just the assassins or if anybody can decode them, but there's something like that. But the other thing I was going to add is you could have it so... Maybe there was, at one point in time, someone, one woman got pregnant via one of the assassins and she had to run away for her own safety, which then leads into the whole shadow guild of people having some weird mysterious link to it so they know roughly about the assassins and instead of just going, oh yeah, that's we just randomly know about assassins that just hit these random things. Yeah, just because like the main like there's the film with Michael Fassbender opens up in the mid like in, opens up in a desert. Uh, even though you had the prelude of uh, the assassin his ancestor and everything, but it basically opens up with in a desert. A young cow walks into his house, see that his mother's been killed by who you find out is his father, and then the uh, Templars end up arriving like in SUVs at his house and his dad tells him to run saying they found us and everything like that and then Cal runs off and then whatever but then that's never explained either like it it doesn't open up anything you just go okay so it's obviously his mum who's been killed and the assassins are after him but we the uh, Templars are after him but we don't know why yeah it (laughs) It's one of those things where it had so much potential in terms of making it a great plot, but they didn't really give any answers other than just go, she died because she was an ancestor of these amazing people. Holy shit. Well, Well, the only thing is, when it comes to assassins... You can't tell the you can't tell the story of the assassins within an hour and a half. It is impossible. Like these films. Like Assassin's Creed 2, I'll give you the example. Uh, the Assassin's Creed 2, do you know when you can go on YouTube and you can type in a game or whatever and you just type in, I don't know, something like Uncharted Uncharted free film. And obviously it'll be the cutscenes and everything, a little bit of the game itself, but you can see, but there's a whole movie where you can watch the cutscenes, makes sense. And you can do the same thing with Assassin's Creed. And I think Assassin's Creed is something like, Assassin's Creed 2 alone is something I think like about nine hours long worth of cutscenes and footage. And the only way you could tell a whole complete story with it making sense is a series. You can't tell it in a film. It's impossible. Because mm. like Assassin's Creed, you've got so much information, you have to pile into an hour and a half, and you can't do it. Why do you think Ezio's storyline was stretched out over like six, like five or six games? <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, this is the thing is... It's an incredible series, nonetheless, but it's a very complex series. Which I am glad that I've heard whispers and rumblings. I can't, I don't know if it's confirmed, but Assassin's Creed, as an Assassin's Creed series, is coming to Netflix. See, now that I would prefer, because I've been wondering this for a while now. I've been wondering whether movies as a whole are slowly dying out, and TV series is going to be, or at least like subscription series is going to be the next big thing i don't feel it's a bad thing to be honest well i mean the thing is it's all well and good having a movie but you're always so time constrained i think most movies are no longer than say what two and a bit hours some are like three hours give or take but if you consider how much information you can get in three hours it's not a lot compared to the whole scope of the story but if you have say A series that may be between 13 and 21 episodes, give or take, each one being around about an hour long, that's a hell of a lot easier to digest, and it makes it a lot easier to go, ah, so I can go back to this point to figure out why this connects to this, and this, 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 and this. Exactly. So with the games, with the games being so long, like, sometimes I'd think, oh, this Assassin's Creed game's going on forever, but it makes complete sense because the way it's explained and the way it goes through the game and so on and the way the uh, way the people that created the games did the plot and so on, it makes perfect sense. It's easy to follow. It stretches throughout onto another game. So like one, two, three, whatever. The whole plot makes sense because you have so much time to tell the story in. You're not restricted. No, I mean... It's one of those things where it'd be amazing to see if they can do it right, 
But would you rather it be live action or would you rather it be, say, like an animated style instead? Absolutely not. I think we've all been wanting, all Assassin's Creed fans have been wanting it to be a live action because that's what we've wanted for so long. And when we did get the live action, we were severely let down. And the Rotten Tomato score was just appalling. The reviews are funny, but yeah, really disheartening because... Like Michael Fassbender, when he's done interviews, he generally loves the games and played them religiously, loved the games, loved the concept. And I think he was definitely proud of what he did for Assassin's Creed, and he should be. And he tried his best. It wasn't his fault with the plot. He was just doing what he was supposed to. But the plot was just so... The film was rubbish. It is not worth watching. Just go play the games. It's not worth watching. So with live action, it has to go the live action way. And... They have to do it the way that the games did because you have the modern world and you have the history which they bleed in together and they constantly crisscross over each other in a way that makes sense. So with the way it's been done, I would love to see what they do in the modern world with the modern assassins and you know whether they have a group of, of assassins, would they tell a live action story of Desmond Miles? Would they have a completely different character entirely? Or would it crisscross through different characters? But that's something which I think a lot of Assassin's Creed fans, especially me, would love to see. So a modern world, I think. Yeah, I think that could work quite well, to be fair. I mean, is there anything else we can add to this topic today? Well, one thing which I do want to add is that hopefully if it's showcased later on, it may be just be a short video or whatever. Is, um, obviously, me and Ben, we love creating a lot of stuff with our hands, so... At the minute, my fingers are sore from all the sewing and everything which I've been doing. So I'm creating a modern, I'm creating a modern Assassin's Creed outfit, and I've had to do a lot of research to see how a real assassin would, an Assassin's Creed assassin would work. I've said Assassin's Creed assassin so many times that I'm saying ass ass. I can hear myself <laughs> saying it, but I'm creating a modern costume. How it would work in the real world? What weapons would a modern assassin have? I doubt that they would be using a bow and arrow and stuff like that and swords. I doubt they'd be using swords in the modern world. I doubt that. Maybe knives? Yes, I reckon so. Bow? Maybe, because we, they do have quite amazing bows, you know, in today's world, which I would still have my character using. Uh, definitely knives, definitely throwing knives. So I'm creating an, a, a costume to see how it would look in the modern world and how you'd be able to adapt it to... The real world without it being connected to like history and res respecting the history of the assassins, but having that a modern day uh, flair to it. So I'm creating that costume. And at the minute, uh, I've seen all the 3D printing that Ben's been doing right now when I went round uh, to his house. And oh my God, it's getting complex. <laughs> Yeah. What are you doing over there? What are you doing? Do you want to tell so, me? Well, I dare not touch it because it's quite a hefty thing. But to over here, some of you have probably Sorry. seen in the past few other episodes, I made Stormbreaker, folks. It took me about three months to make. But oh my Christ, did it take a long ass time. Uh, I mean, yeah. the thing is, me and Jack, we... We nerd out about everything, as you've seen on this channel many a times. But now that things are slowly getting back to normal, we want to try and get ready for Comic-Con, if we can actually go to one. <laughs> and so, obviously, me and Jack are trying to get our skills in doing costume making better. I am trying to do so many different ideas at the moment, but my printer is having its moments as it is. But... I do have one idea that I think may or may not work in terms of a modern assassin idea for you as a weapon. Tasers. You could, instead of a spring-loaded knife, it could be a spring-loaded, like, taser device. I would keep the concept of the uh, the hidden blade, because you have to have that... It's not Assassin's Creed about a hidden blade. But True. I've seen in the Assassin's Creed encyclopedia, and the reference for it is pretty cool. It's a blade which... Deadly enough, stabby enough, or cutty enough, but there's a modification to it where it does have kind of a taser and where it's capable of, depending on the voltage, it's capable of stunning somebody or killing people with electricity, which is a cool concept. And I think the idea behind it was that if you use electricity or maybe a shock to kill your, your target, you wouldn't really have any trace of who it may be, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, I can see where you're coming from. So th there's lots of takes on the hidden blade. There's also, I like the concept of the hidden blade gun as well, which they have done in the games, which is a bloody cool idea. Uh, there's the idea of the a mini crossbow, which is on a mini crossbow. I love that one. On hidden blade, and, which I, I love that freaking idea. I would love to make that. And um, there's another concept for the hidden blade, which is they had it in Assassin's Creed Revelations. It's called the Hook Blade. So obviously they're known for their parkour and their climbing and so on. And what it does, it extends quite far out. You have the hidden blade and then you have the hook. So the hook comes out where they can latch onto buildings without ha having to hold on. And this hook just holds them from their arm, from the hidden blade, which is a cool idea. And the very last idea which they had, which um, was in Assassin's Creed 3, where the blade comes out, but it's got a modification to where you could, it flips down, you can use it just like a real knife. So it's got many modifications, but I would love to play around with it and see maybe we might do a fan film or maybe like Ben may have an idea for a fan film, which I definitely think we'll try it out mm -hmm. at some point in the future. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Comic Con. Oh, yes. I mean, it's hopefully we can fully nerd out this year because we really sorely missed out last year. Oh, yes. But is there anything else you want to add or should we wrap things up? No, and um, to be honest, if anybody has, for all my questions on Assassin's Creed, if anybody can send me the timeline or something like that, or comment down below the order of the order of the games, please let me know because I am confused as hell. So thank you very much, and we'll see you in the very next video, which is for Ben's topic. Which what is your topic? So, I I've been having a look at certain movies that are. Supposed to be kids' movies, but are a lot more dark and twisted than they should be. And one movie that I've mentioned to Jack, which I really do hope you watch in the next week, and I'm going to re-watch it anyway, is Return to Oz, the uh -huh. sequel to The Wizard of Oz, which... Mm. Let's just put it... I'm trying to find the politest way of putting it. Um, twisted. Yeah. Very twisted. I mean, it's just like one of those. I don't think I, I, from what I've seen of it, anybody who hasn't seen Return to Oz or even just clips, you will never watch The Wizard of Oz the same way ever again. To no. me, it's been it's been ruined for me because now we'll explain later. <laughs> yeah, it's there are so many things wrong with this entire movie, and wrong? to be fair, well. <laughs> Wrong is the politest way I can Baffling, put it for the moment. To be <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's my topic for next week. And again, as per usual, thanks for joining us. Stay safe, stay home, and we'll see you all soon. Thanks very much. Bye. <laughs>